compassion of our Lord. I will be brief because of the length of the ceremony today. But if you don't think the uh, scripture is inspired, I'll tell you. Uh, if you look at the beginning of the Passion, at the Last Supper, when, when Jesus said, One of you is about to betray me. And each apostle said, Is it I, Lord? And then Judas, his betrayer, Is it I, Rabbi? Check it out. Without the Holy Spirit in you, you can't say. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot say, Jesus is Lord. And at that moment, the Spirit was vacant from poor Judas. This is the holiest week of the year. And uh, do you remember a few years ago, uh, was it Mel Gibson had the movie The Passion of Christ? Okay. I, I saw it. It was very moving. Mel Gibson, forgive me now, uh, but Mel focused on the physical suffering, horrible as it was, focused on the physical suffering. And you'll notice that the four evangelists do not do that. Why? Because they focus on the love that Christ has for each of us, revealed in the suffering. He gave his life for us. He did not have to die. He freely chose to give his life that we might be saved. But the focus of the evangelist is his love for each one of you. So focus on that. Look at a crucifix and know that you are loved uh, by God. Know that you are loved by Christ. And know that His Holy Spirit is living within you. I want to make a confession. And maybe I'm not the only one here uh, who, who could confess this. You don't have to stand up. Uh, but we began Lent on Ash Wednesday. And here we are now uh, beginning Holy Week. And I have to confess to God and to you that I have not lived the kind of Lent that I wanted to when I began on Ash Wednesday. That, that I have failed uh, to live up to what I know I can do and what I believe Christ wants me to do. Uh, and and uh, so I've had a lot of internal stress and all of this other things happening that shouldn't be happening. And so I come to Holy Week uh, confessing that I really, I really have failed to live the kind of Lent that God wants me to live. Now, if there's anybody else in the same boat, uh, then remember this. God loves us. God is a merciful God. And, uh, you know, when we were little kids, We'd go out on a day like today, and we'd play outside, and we'd come back in. We'd be all dirty. Our clothes would be all dirty, and we'd have mud. And what would your mom do? And my dad, too. Say, take them all up, bathe you, dress you again, uh, clean you all up. Uh, that's what I want God to do for me this whole week. I'm going to just throw myself at the mercy of God. Say, look, the one week left, clean me up and trust uh, that, 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 he, that he will do that. Final word, we've, we've worked hard planning what I hope will be prayerful liturgies this Holy Week. And, and uh, wouldn't it be great if on Holy Thursday and Good Friday the church was packed? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be great if you came in here Thursday night for the Mass of the Lord's Supper and you had to fight to get a seat? Wouldn't that be great? I'd love it. But people were fighting for seats. Well, we put everything at 7 o'clock to, to, to make it easy. Uh, Holy Thursday, 7 o'clock, Mass of the Lord's Supper, and then you could stay an hour in the Garden of Gethsemane. You could not spend an hour with me. Good Friday, celebrating our Lord's Passion, embracing the cross, venerating the cross, 
7 o'clock on Good Friday, and then the vigil. The vigil, 7 o'clock, Saturday night, and we have nine people entering the church, nine people entering the parish on Friday night. It's, it's a major blessing uh, for, for our parish and for all of us uh, throughout, throughout the world. So I just wish you a wonderful Holy Week. Know that your priest is very imperfect and much, much of a sinner, but Christ came for sinners. You got it. You got one right here. He'll clean me up. He'll clean me up. Please stand now.